You're listening to InvestSmart Podcasts. Today, Michael Pepicelli is speaking with Dominic Stevens, head of the Australian Securities Exchange. Back in December 2017, the ASX officially announced that it would adopt blockchain technology in favour of the chess system for the processing and clearance of transactions, almost two years after development commenced. Although we're still two and a half years away from the scheduled starting date, there is plenty of intrigue surrounding the decision, and ASX CEO Dominic Stevens has joined Eureka Report for an exclusive chat about the switch. Dominic, welcome. Thank you, Michael. So first up, uh, the ASX is going to become one of the first stock exchanges in the world to adopt such a system. Uh, What is the reason for the change and why is now the right time to make this change? Well, I think um, the interesting thing is, is that, um, you know, obviously we have a number of uh, uh, systems and technology at ASX and um, what you have at ASX in the clearing and technology, uh, clearing and uh, settlement space is the, the chess system. The chess system was a groundbreaking system when it came in, in um, the sort of the mid 90s. It's now sort of getting towards the, the end of its, its career in, uh, in clearing and settlement. And the interesting thing is that the board uh, back in um, 2015, uh, when we were looking at how we were going to pr- replace this system, said, you know, let's look at all of the options out there and let's, we, we know we're hearing a bit about this new technology called blockchain that actually is, a, is a, an interesting way of, of running uh, databases and running registries. And, uh, and so that started a long process, as you mentioned in your, or your intro, around actually finding out about this technology and whether it was applicable um, for uh, running a, a, a clearing and settlement uh, system such as uh, what we have in Australia. Um, that process went for uh, a couple of years, a lot of work um, finding the right partner to work with us in the technology, a lot of work uh, basically proving up the actual technology itself, and a lot of work talking to all the participants and uh, stakeholders in the market and regulators about um, you know, what, what they were looking for and uh, uh, you know, whether this was appropriate for them. And that gets us to where we got to in December last year, as you mentioned. And now we're sort of moving forward on a path of, uh, of looking at this as a technology or actually implementing this as a technology to replace the chess system. So probably the question that most investors uh, will be asking is, what are the main differences between the chess system and the blockchain system? I think that's a really good question, Michael. And there's, <clears throat> I'd say there's quite a bit of confusion on this because I think most people, when they think of blockchain and distributed ledger, they, they go down a path of, I've heard about this thing called Bitcoin and there's ICOs and there's cryptocurrencies and there's, doesn't this thing use the, the electricity supply of a small European country and there's a consensus and it's, and it's all anonymous and all of these things. And so the interesting thing from our point of view is, is there is all of, all of those things with the, the Bitcoin implementation, but what we've done is actually say that you know, this is a highly regulated market that trades, you know, billions of dollars in a day. And so what we need is a very transparent um, system and one that actually solves uh, the, the problem of real-time source of truth. And so what I mean by that is, is that instead of having us all having a whole bunch of different systems and disparate um, technologies that actually spend all their time reconciling with each other, can we actually take this bit of uh, IP out of um, the blockchain concept and apply it to the clearing and settlement system such that when ASX, which is the source of truth for transactions in the equity market, has a database that everyone can actually have distributed to them that same source of truth in real time, such that actually it will make their processes more easy, more efficient, and actually will enable those participants to our market to provide better services to their customers and their customers' customers. So you've briefly touched on this, but what do you think yep. the benefits will be uh, of the switch for investors? Well, I think I think for investors that there's a number of things um, that that come from this. The first thing is is actually you know, putting the information out, getting information out on a real-time source of truth basis should mean that every, um, you know, the efficiency of the way that the whole, what we call post-trade world, in other words, once a trade happens, how it clears, how it settles, how it is registered, 
how do people get updates of what their positions are, how do people get confirmations of, of what happens should all happen in a more efficient and uh, real-time sense. So, um, you know, for end users and investors, there's that. What that will, will probably then allow um, our participants to do is, is offer um, customers more, um, uh, more choices. So I see in a future world that uh, participants might be able to, instead of settling over two days, they may be able, may have the option to settle earlier. They may have the option to see the real-time source of truth online, um, such that they don't have to receive. I have to. They could opt out of um, getting sent envelopes with, um, you know, records uh, that are paper-based. Um, that. Uh, uh, you know that because that information is out there, it will mean that um, the the brokers and the banks that they use to actually supply them with their portfolios and their information will be able to do that in a more efficient and uh, better way. So you know, I, I think all of this comes from actually ASX. You know, as you would know, is 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 not dealing directly with retail investors and end users so much out there. But what we're doing is providing the infrastructure for banks, custodians, brokers, financial advisors, or whatever, to enable them to provide better services to their customers. So how will investors uh, be affected when the switch is coming into effect? Uh, will, will they notice the difference? I, I think um, you know initially what, what will happen is, so we're, we're talking, as you said earlier on, um, about sort of like uh, early 2021. And I think that um, for end user investors like retail investors, they won't notice um, the difference sort of day one because what, what where the work really is, is actually ASX um, uh, developing and putting in a new system and all the participants that connect to that system actually, uh, you know, basically connecting all their systems together to join with the ASX system. What investors will see after that is all of those those benefits that I've talked about. Um, you know, whether in the future it means that um, they'll be able to get their dividends earlier, whether it means that a rights issue becomes more efficient, whether it means that they can get, um, you know, electronic source of truth information rather than it get in, getting sent out, uh, you know, uh, via paper. All of those things will follow from there. But the real the real sort of grunt and hard yards will be done by the ASX and um, our, uh, our participant um, uh, uh, customers. So you probably touched on this a little bit in your last answer there, but mm -hmm. uh, will there be any changes to the roles of share registries as a result of the change? No, I, I, well, I think what it will mean is, again, it'll, it'll probably make share registries' lives easier in the fact that they will actually now be able to get that information easier. I think, I, I, you know, and I, there's still uh, details to be worked out here, but I think also it will allow investors to be able to put together um, uh, shares that they may hold on a HIN and shares that they may hold on an issuer register and consolidate them better. It will probably allow um, uh, you know, brokers and custodians to actually um, enable those processes to happen easier. We're also in tandem with this uh, working on um, what we call sort of um, STP or straight through processing too. Um, dividends now, uh, you know, uh, are straight through processed from an issuer basically putting in an electronic um, uh, uh, form that actually processes that dividend through the system. Uh, rights issues, um, uh, you know, bonus issues, stock splits, various other um, straight through processing will happen automatically uh, by the time we get to uh, to the rollout of, uh, of of the new chess system. So a whole bunch of efficiencies that are happening in the back will just make uh, dealing with the system a whole lot easier. I'm sure there'll be plenty of people out, people out there who probably when they hear all this talk of uh, technology and blockchain and whatnot, they probably you know might get a little bit intimidated and you know uh, I guess a little bit scared of what they don't know potentially. Um, Will the ASX be doing anything uh, in particular to uh, educate investors about the new system? I, th I, th I think we will. I think, you know, like if you look at what we've done with the, you know, sort of our inner ring of people who we talk to, the, the um, participants, um, we've done sort of two years of consultations. We've had, I think, Matt, something like 500, 600 maybe presentations. We've got a room here where we take everyone through it. Um, so I think as 
you know, we look into 2020 and 21 when this is sort of going more out into, into sort of uh, a retail world, you know, we'll think about how actually we can explain this better to people. And I think you bring up a good, a good, good point there, which I sort of um, touched on a little bit earlier on, which is I think um, people get a little bit scared that, you know, there's little, you know, blockchain and Bitcoin and is this all voodoo? What does it really mean? Um, but what, what you really find when you look at it is, is that there are still going to be relational databases as they are. These things are still going to sit behind firewalls. These, still things, these um, systems will still have the same uh, communications, you know, that sit over permissioned networks and all of those things. So, so and, and what they'll have is more uh, cryptographic um, security around them. So what people should feel is, is that these are, we are moving to a, something similar but what it's got in the fact that it's got this append-only uh, blockchain or distributed ledger that's attached to it, it allows actually the process of reconciliation to drop out of the system and it allows uh, this information. We, we see at the ASX is what we're doing is actually exposing um, you know, information to permissioned people who, who want access to that and that information they can rely on without having to ring us up every day to say, you know, my ledger says this, can I just check that that's correct? They'll be able to, to look at that and say, I know because I can prove mathematically that if, uh, if I've got this information and I'm sitting on the distributed ledger, I know that that's exactly what ASX has got. And so that's gonna make it easier for everyone. So it sounds so like- they shouldn't feel sort of worried about it. Okay, so it sounds like there's plenty, uh, plenty going on, and I'm sure it's uh, it's not cheap. So, uh, I guess what are the expected costs of the switch? Well, there's a whole lot of things there because the interesting thing is, is that as I began this this conversation, it was about the replacement of chess. And the interesting thing is, is the way the equity market works in Australia is not the same as the way the equity market works in you know any other country. And so, when we're replacing chess, it's not as if we can go and buy a equity clearing and settlement system off the shelf. We'll have to build a new one. And so building a new uh, equity clearing and settlement system, um, which was uh, in sort of, like, uh, I guess you could call it traditional technology or, my, or sort of just replacing what we had, or doing it with the, the, the piece of IP attached to it, be the blockchain that allows us to synchronize all this uh, in real time. The differences between those two things is actually not too much different. Obviously, you know, we're spending a, a significant amount of money in replacing this system, but we were going to have to do that anyway. And so this is part of the, you know, if you look at ASX's accounts, you'll see that, you know, we spend, you know, sort of like, uh, you know, 50 to $70 million a year on capital expenditure. And that is the expenditure of basically keeping our systems, um, you know, serviced up to date, keeping hardware up to date and all those things. So. This is part and parcel of what we do. It's probably going to cost us a little bit more to put in um, the blockchain piece, but we feel that the the upside for the industry from that, um, you know, I, I personally believe could be quite significant over the coming years. So as I'm sure you're well aware, we've uh, we've seen teething issues with new technologies in the past. Uh, how confident are you that this technology will be able to handle the volume of transactions on the ASX? I think we're totally confident in that. And I think it's a really good question and it goes to this sort of um, concept of, um, you know, like, you know, all oh, this is all new and a bit scary. You know, effectively the, 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 the speed of um, being able to process transactions is all, uh, and, and on the, uh, in the world of blockchain and Bitcoin is all about the consensus mechanism, which is you might've heard of mining for Bitcoin, that's yes. what uses the power. That's what you, that slows the system down, such you can only do five to seven trades a second or whatever. The, the, the system that we're um, implementing doesn't have any of that um, in it. And so what that means is, is, you know, where the system stands now, we can see that we'll already process transactions faster than uh, what we're currently processing today, and in fact, significantly faster. So. That's actually a sort of a, a Bitcoin-related red herring. There is, there, there will be no problem with transaction speeds. The start date uh, has already been postponed with the recent announcement that it would be pushed back to, to probably March or April uh, 2021. Uh, how mm -hmm. confident are you that everything will be ready to go by that date? 
firstly, just to, just to clarify that, the original um, timeline was somewhere, it was either fourth quarter 2020, first quarter 2021, so it's been moved to the end of the window. Um, and what I would say is that was at the request of um, the market. Um, and I think the, the market actually you know, wants a lot of new functionality and actually wants the system in as, as fast as possible. We delivered um, something like 40 new pieces of functionality to the market on top of replacing chess. And I think the market said, you know, sort of that's quite a lot. Um, maybe can we thin a few of these down and actually move the window of, um, uh, move to the back end of the window. And I think, you know, to, to, um, to put myself in their shoes, what you've got to understand is a lot of these these players are global custodians, they're global investment banks, and they're um, you know watching what's going to happen with Brexit over the next couple of years. There may be some uh, technology initiatives, you know, having to come out of that. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of the, the the MIFID rules, which are a lot of the changes to the way the whole equity market works over in Europe. Um, and so, you know, I think this next couple of years, people are very busy with their uh, technology program. So I think people were just being conservative in saying, maybe a little less functionality on day one and let's move um, sort of like to the back end of that window just to make sure we've all got time to, uh, to get there. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, Dominic Stevens. thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Michael. For more podcasts, articles and videos, visit us at investmart.com.au.